Okay, first uh, let's discuss like in IELTS speaking test. In IELTS speaking, normally you'll have three sections in speaking. The test is maybe for 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, depends on number of questions you can answer. Okay, so the first part, it's called all about yourself. They will ask you who you are, what do you do, what are your interests? So there is no right and wrong answer. Everything that you say is correct. Okay. So the first thing they ask you is like, what is your name? If they ask you, what is your name? You should answer your full name. Uh, not just Shubrata. You should say that my name is Shubrata Das or the full name, Shubrata Shubro. And the next question, mostly they ask you like, what do you do? So sometimes they give you option, like are you a student or are you working? So welcome Saifullah. So we are doing our speaking classes. So the next question they ask you is, what do you do? So in that case, you answer is like, the answer should be in a complete sentence. Don't just say like only one or two words. If you just say that, I do a job or something like this is no good so it's better that you explain like you can say that I'm working as a medical technologist at uh, uh, at like lab aid hospital in Dhaka so if you answer in a complete sense that would be better if you are studying you can say that okay I'm studying um, uh, Bachelor of Science at University of Dhaka so try to answer in a complete sentence that would be better Okay, and then they will ask you to see your passport or identification. They will ask you, may I see your ID? Okay, so here you can ask, uh, I mean, here you can uh, like answer in a polite way. You can say that uh, certainly sir or certainly madam, and then you can forward your uh, passport as identification. For IELTS in our country, the only acceptable ID is passport. So you have to have a passport before you go to the exam. Okay. And then uh, they start asking you different questions on different topics. So here you see we have some topic. It's about email. So they are asking you a question about email. And all these are like formatted exams. So the examiner would not ask you any random question. The question that are relevant and that are written on that booklet, uh, they are asking you that, not any irrelevant question. Okay. So here you can see the first topic is email. So the question asks, what kind of emails do you receive about your work or studies? Okay. So in part one, remember your answer should be like one to two sentence or maybe three sentence. No need to answer more than three sentence. Okay, so the technique here, sometimes some people like provide a lot of introduction. That's not a very good way to answer. The, the best way is to like, what the question says, we first go to the question and try to answer it. And then provide explanation. So. What kind of emails do you receive about your work or studies? So you can say that I normally receive two to three work or study related emails. Most of them are related to my assignments or class schedule. And if it is related to work, it's about my working roster. So you can explain what are the emails you have. But some other people, sometimes they provide like a lot of uh, introductory sentences, but not providing the answer. That's really bad. Okay, so the thing is, you have to like provide an answer and then just go for the explanation. That's better. Uh, some people start with like, uh, we receive a lot of email. Email is very important. Uh, I do receive many emails every day. So this is 
indirect and it's not answering your question. So you must go for what exactly this is about. It's about your work or studies. It's not about like what kind of other email you receive. Okay. So uh, like Shubhrut, if I ask you this question, like what kind of emails do you receive about your work or studies? Uh, could you please answer this in your own words? Hello. Hello. Yeah. So could you please answer this question if I ask you like what kind of emails do you receive about your work? Yeah, just answer one or two sentence like yeah, I receive uh, my work related email, which contains my duty roster. And sometimes I receive email from my college. It's about my assignments or study related emails like class lectures. Yes, sir. Okay, just, uh, okay, just create simple sentences. Okay, just repeat after me. like. I receive emails from my work. Okay, just say this. I receive my emails from work. You have to say something. <laughs> okay, so speaking is all about practice. If you do not make mistake, then you would not learn, you know? So this is very important, making mistakes, yes, you know, if you make more yes, mistakes, sir, the yeah, then you can, actually make more progress. Okay. Yes, so the next question is about, do you prefer to email, phone or text your friend? Do you prefer to email, phone, or text your friend? So it's about which one you prefer. Like, do you like to email your friend or text your friend? Which one do you prefer? Okay, you need to participate here, you know, like say something like, Okay, so normally, do you call your friends? Yes, sir. Yes, so just say that, okay, yes, we normally call my friend and I want yes. to like, yeah. Like, and mostly I call them regarding like, this and that so you just need to like state the purpose they are saying you see the another question is saying why why do you call them or text them okay so the question here is do you prefer to email phone or text your friends why if you can say that yeah so i normally call my friends to hang out or discuss some matters However, we strictly use email or text for business purposes or for a specific purpose, such as for a group meeting or for a specific message, something like that. And email also we use to convey greetings as well as uh, like, attachments like videos or pictures, which is easy to transfer. So email is more related to business and work. Phone is more related to like personal use. Text is more related to like convey short messages. 
Okay. Now, the third question is, do you reply to emails and messages as soon as you receive them? Okay. It's a Okay, so if this question was asked to me, I'll answer something sir, like this. Sir, I have a question, sir. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sir, I'm back. Okay, no worries. So if, uh, why then? Why I and explain? why not? Yes, yeah. you should explain. Yeah. If, if why then I explain why the uh, explain or replay the messages and if, why not? Yeah, still you explain, okay? So even if it is why you don't reply them, you explain the same situation again. Otherwise, the examiner will ask you questions, okay? So the question is... That means, that means I have to reply, uh, I, that means I have to uh, talk about why and why not also. Why? Yes, if it is why, then you answer. No, no, your answer would be like one, one of these. So one maybe way. you, yeah, maybe you reply immediately or maybe you don't, or it may contain oh. both. If you have like logical explanation, you can say that, yes, I mostly try to reply immediately if the message is urgent or it is from uh, my boss or my from, from my professor. And sometime I reply email or messages in a later time if it is not so urgent or if it is not related to business. You can say something like that. So in that case, you replied both. Why you reply immediately? Why you don't reply immediately? Got it. Okay, so yeah. So the technique to answer the question here is all about like, first go to the answer of the question and then try to, then try to just, uh, explain the later part. If you do not explain what will happen, uh, the examiner will ask you more questions, okay? Like why or why not? Okay, the other question we have here is, are you happy to receive emails that are advertising things? And the same thing is like, why, why not? You can answer both part or single part, single part. Okay. So here, like, yeah, most of the time I don't prefer to receive advertising things. However, there are some adverts which I gladly receive that contains waivers or coupons or like discount codes. By that way, I can save some money. But the other advertising emails I hate because they spam my folder and they also waste my time and yeah, time and space as well. So the advertising things mostly are kind of spam that gives us like annoying material, which I don't normally need. However, there are some useful advertisements which are giving us some useful information and also discount codes that can help us to save money. Okay, now here, if you see this, this is uh, one of the most important part. It's called Q card. This Q card section. Here, you have a topic and the examiner will hand you this topic and you will have exactly one minute to take some note about it. And then you have to speak on this topic for one to two minutes, at least one minute. And when you are answering, you should answer these, these facts, okay? So these things, and then you explain, okay? 
So when you are taking notes, just try to take short notes. Like here, you'll take note, like describe a hotel. So you write just hotel, where, what, and what facilities. And explain whether you think this is a nice hotel or not. Explain why nice. Okay. So you need to take note. So this like four or five lines and take just simple words, write down simple words like where is this hotel is? Okay, where this hotel is, like maybe you write the place name, maybe Cox Bazaar or Dhaka or any other place. What this hotel looks like. Okay, you describe some of the hotels, uh, like outlook, like modern structure. So like modern, five star, swimming pool, this and that. So you write some of those things. And the what the facilities this hotel has. So this hotel, oh, okay, in swimming pool, you can put it here. The facilities, the hotel. Swimming pool, uh, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, yes. Free Wi-Fi, you can add more, like, okay, it has free Wi-Fi or it has, uh, like, what are the other uh, things? It has a gaming zone. Hotel yeah. and restaurant. Yes, yeah, it has food court, hotel and restaurant, yes. So it has a... Have a kids some, zone for children. Kids zone, yes. Some of the hotels, they have, uh, like, other amenities. Okay, so like uh, gym facilities, spa, and uh, so some of things like that as well. So you can relax or exercise. Okay, gymnasium. So gym gymnasium, yes. So you just take short note of these things, and then when you start speaking, you know, you just need to take note of your time. So one minute time is a very long time. If, you, if I just uh, try to note time, okay? so if I go to timer, so you will see that one minute is actually very long time, you know? So if I start my time here, and two minutes is like way long. So normally what we have seen that in one minute, we can speak 10 to 12 sentences, and in two minutes, we can construct 20 to 25 sentences. Sometimes if you are fast, you can speak up to 30 sentences. So 30 sentences is very, very long. You know? 30 sentences is actually more than an essay. So 30 sentences will contain more than 300 words. So it's kind of a, like writing an essay, you know? It's kind of big. Okay, so if we start, so here, when the examiner gives you pen and paper and then when he con uh, like instructs you to start, so after one minute, after taking preparation, the examiner will tell you, could you please start or could you please begin? So like, yes, and then you can start. Here you can provide more more and more about like what i say it's more about providing introduction this and that because you have to speak a lot of things here okay so if i start something like this So I have visited many hotels in my life. Hotel is an excellent place to stay and enjoy, especially for the tourists when I visit uh, places like Cox Bazaar. So the hotel that I'm going to describe is like the Hotel Cox Today, which is a very good hotel located near the sea beach in Cox's Bazaar. This Hotel Cox Today it has a modern structure. The structure is 
completely new and it's mostly constructed by glass and uh, marble tiles. The architecture resembles our own heritage and combination of uh, Western architecture. Also, the hotel has many facilities which include free Wi-Fi and swimming pool as well as a restaurant which caters all sorts of food. You can enjoy Bangladeshi food and Indian and Thai, even Chinese. And there are some Western cuisines are available as well. The best thing that the hotel provide is like they can give you free tour of the city. They have some free tour guides and a small bus that can take you to different places and you can buy different stuff, uh, which is very convenient. Another thing the hotel has is 24 hour customer care service. So whenever you go hungry or you need something, you can call the hotel reception, you can ask for help. Uh, this is why I like this hotel very much. And this hotel is one of my favorite. So you see already it has gone beyond two minutes. So when you go beyond two minutes, the examiner will stop you and then you'll move on uh, to the next part. So the next part, it's called follow-up questions. So in follow-up questions, normally, they ask you more in depth. So in this follow-up questions, actually, you have to answer at least three to five sentences. So here, not only the answer, not only explanation, provides some suggestion as well. Okay, so like you have to construct more and more sentences, three to five sentences at least. If you can provide more sentence, even it's better. So if you see the follow-up question here, the first one says, what things are important when people are choosing a hotel? So you see, it's a very simple question, choosing a hotel, what things are important? So you didn't say that these and these and that are need to be included, but you need to construct at least three to five sentences. So you can like start, most of the time, people choose a hotel by look by just observing the location, the convenient location. So the convenient location is the most important part. And another thing that people choose when they are choosing a hotel, that is a price and services. So the price and services should match. Okay. So if the price is too high and the services are not too good, then it's no good. And what are the other things people need to consider when they are choosing a hotel? Do you have any suggestion? Like first thing is like location, price and services. What are the other things? Is there anyone who can give me some suggestion on that? Okay, so this should be uh, like a two way. So people should like participate. You just say something. Somebody needs to like say something. What are the things? Suppose you go to Cox Bazaar or any other tourist spot. How do you select your hotel? This time, uh, first of all, I select uh, the hotel that are located uh, side of the sea beach 
yeah, that uh, so this we, is location we can enjoy the uh, beach scenario from my hotel okay so fasting is like convenient location and scenario and okay so what are the other things mm. So the price is also yeah. important. Yeah, it's important. And the other thing is facility of hotel. Yeah, the facilities and services, yes. That's the second thing you need, yes, of course. And what are the other things people choose? Nobody mentioned about safety and security, you know, if the place is completely okay. like insecure even if the price yeah. is very low you would not go there <laughs> yeah so the safety mm -hmm. and security is very very important you know so that is very important as well so we can answer like this yeah so here provide introduction and other thing because this is a follow-up question so you really need to have insightful information you should say something like that when choosing a hotel people should consider the following aspects such as the security and the location of the hotel because we need to be very close to the tourist spot or the place of our business and also it needs to be secure because otherwise you will lose your valuables and another thing people have to consider is the price and the services they provide if the price tag is very high it would not be affordable for you. So then this would be way out of our budget. Okay, so that's the second thing. And then the other thing you can say about the hotels. Yeah, sometimes some people choose hotel like... Choosing a hotel that's... Uh, there are different types of going to tours uh, and then their economic condition is different yes, economic types. condition and also some people choose the hotel by just uh like they are going through the ratings you know so some two, two businessman star star. even if yeah yeah two star three star four star five star even if some businessman or star even if your hotel is secure everything is good world class but if your hotel is like three star a, a, a big a big celebrity would not visit your hotel you know like when a right. president or prime yeah. minister coming so they should go to a hotel which is five star you know at least five star so yeah, yes. yes the rating of the hotel is also a factor for the people like celebrities and or general businessmen people. yeah uh, the rating is not really that important for general people mostly the general people they prefer the safety and security and the location and the price if this and match economic yeah economy this yeah. price tag location if they match they all would be very very happy that okay we win but the businessmen and the other people they would not be happy you know they want to live yeah. in a five-star hotel which has all the facilities so the price tag is not the price tag is not the important issue here okay sir. okay so now we go to the next question why do some people not like staying in hotels why people don't like to stay in hotels okay what are the reasons? Okay, is there anyone? No suggestions? Uh -huh. okay. Some of them are not using hotel because of the price and they use hostel and things like that. Yeah, very good, very good suggestion. So 
uh, price tag and other things. Yeah. So yes, yeah. this is one of the important thing because you know in the Western uh, world there are some uh, terms like backpackers, hitchhikers. You know, some people they go out of uh, their home to like visit different places and they have uh, little money, you know. So they don't want to spend a mm -hmm. lot of money on hotels and other things. So they want to mm -hmm. stay in like backpackers, uh, like hostels. And yes. sometimes there are some like, uh, some family also share the accommodation for this family stays or this sort of thing where people can stay even in uh, some universities they have like in your lodge or other thing which is relatively cheap cheaper than uh, hotel yes yeah but the other thing concerning hotel some people they don't want to stay in hotel it's like the health issue you know some people do not like the hotels uh, what do you call it? the housekeeping services? They think that the hotel sheets and other thing may not be clean properly, yes. so it might create some sort of a, like a problem. And also, some people do not like the hotels because the hotels may have something which might go against your values or sometime your culture or something like that so if a hotel has a casino and you don't like that okay so you'd not go to that hotel or something like that okay so yeah and the other thing is like also the in the hotel the rooms are very small in most cases and the price tag is very high so if you can leave in a like a house or an apartment that would be much better if you can so these are the things as well okay so you can say that okay most of the people uh, they don't like to stay hotel because of the high price tag and there are some other people who are concerned about their health and other issues related to room service because the rooms may not be cleaned on a regular basis because it is used by hundreds of people and sometimes some other people they do not prefer to stay in hotel because of their culture and social values okay Here also that staying in hotel series uh, feels look like uh, monotonous. Yeah, could be monotonous, yes. Yeah, sometime in hotel you live alone and uh, because you don't know nobody else uh, you miss the like uh, friendly atmosphere. So yes, that could be another reason. If you live uh, in a homestay or something like that, you'd be able to like uh, easily get acquainted with other people mixed with the families yeah that that could be another reason okay so do you think staying in a luxury hotel is a waste of money what do you think okay so do you think uh, it's a waste of money it's a uh, it's time environment demand. It depends on. Okay, so yes, it depends on. You can yeah. So actually, yeah, as I told you earlier, so it depends on the situation. So is it a waste of money or not? Because most of the people stay in hotel. to like do something like if you are visiting a place you don't have a place to stay so you have to find a suitable place where you can stay so accommodation so here the money is it wasted or not so 
Luxurious hotel can sometimes give you experience which is more valuable than money. Suppose newly wed couple, they should not be worried about like money because that would be like if you, they are going to a honeymoon, that would be a lifetime experience. So they would be staying in a hotel where they can enjoy their life. But a hitchhiker who is just going to explore the surrounding and spending a lot of money on luxury hotel, uh, then that would be a waste of money. So it depends on the purpose of what you are doing. Sometimes celebrities going to attend any meeting or something like that, so they have a lot of money. So their safety and security is more important. And luxurious hotel can give you all the amenities as well as safety and security. So if your hotel has like spa and beauty salon and other thing, which the celebrities can use, that could be very useful because that is important for their image. Okay, so now let's go to working in a hotel. Do you think hotel work is a good career for life? Okay. What so, kind of work? Yeah. What uh, hotel work? So hotel work has many type of work. So you can say that yeah. yes, hotel work can be a good choice for life because it gives you a challenge, a lot of challenge because you get to know many people, different types of people from all over the world, and also the hotel career gives you career pathways. So from housekeeping, you can become manager. From manager, you can even later become the general manager or even like the owner of a hotel. So this is a really challenging and diverse. So here you always meet up with people. But another factor is if you are not an extrovert, that means if you are not good at meeting people, then it's not a good career for your life. If you're an introvert people, then it's better to like stay in a work which has less public communication. That would be easier for you, like working behind the scene, you know? So people who do not like to meet other people, for them, it's, it's not gonna be a good career. Okay, how does working in a big hotel compare with working in a small hotel? Okay, so I think it's gonna finish in a few minutes. So meeting, I think it's 45 minutes. Okay, so working in a big hotel compared with a small hotel, what are the differences we have? In a small hotel, you have few staff, so few guests, so fewer facilities, so fewer challenges. The big hotels, lot of guests, lot of people, lot of activity, so you have a lot of challenges. So. Working in a big hotel is more challenging than working in a small hotel in many aspects. However, it can be contrary as well. In big hotels, we have a lot of people to do a lot of things and we have like specialized people to do specialized things so that one person don't have to do a lot of things. But the one person may have to do the specific things like suppose if you're working in housekeeping, you have to just clean the hotels, hotel rooms, and the floors, that's your job. But if you're working in a small hotel, maybe you have to do the housekeeping, you have to answer the telephone calls, do the reception, and uh, do other jobs as well. So both the working condition has different kind of challenges. Big hotel, you have to deal with more guests, but maybe you'd be doing one or two specific jobs, but in small hotel, you may have to deal with small number of guests, but you might have to do multiple tasks. Okay, and the payment facility in big hotel may be better, and in small hotel you may earn less. Okay, 
what skills are needed to be a successful hotel manager so what are the things that you need as i told you like hotel industry or this hospitality is like you need to be a people's person you know you need to be an extrovert so to become a hotel manager what are the actually if you just consider what are the qualities of a manager so manager needs to have a people skills so you need to manage people so the manager must have the capacity to supervise his staff and the hotel manager needs to have patience and knowledge to deal with all sorts of people and guests because some guests may be very rude some guests may have a lot of complaints some guests may be very polite so you have to deal with all of them and you should not lose your patience and also you have to deal with your staff as well so the hotel manager must have multiple qualities which includes managing staff dealing with guests and also the manager needs to have vision you know like what kind of work we might be looking after so expanding your business you need to have some marketing and other policies as well because the managers they they not only work in the management they also work in the expansion and other things as well so in marketing their output is valuable because they have first and experience how the the people the guests are living in the hotel are responding to their services you know if the service is bad and the manager do not take notice of that the hotel business will go broke and if the service some services are doing well then the manager needs to highlight that service that yes we are doing this thing well and what are the other facilities that we can add which can increase our business okay so this is something like uh, our speaking test so in our speaking test it should be like 10 to 15 minutes in the first part they ask you all about yourselves like who you are what you are what do you do or what kind of things you like and then in part two they talk about different topics they give you a topic and you need to take note one minute and after that you need to speak on this topic for about two minutes and after that you have part three which is discussion in discussion you know the examiner will ask you a lot of questions and even they might interrupt in the middle and then ask you or add some more points you know this is an open discussion part so this one is a dialogue but the examiner has like little participation here it's a monologue examiner says nothing you say everything and here it's engagement both examiner and the examinee both participate and engage so more you engage the better you you get here so to get higher score you need to engage more if the examiner at some point you can agree or disagree you know so it's not uh, about like answering the facts there is no right or wrong answer in IELTS you can make up stories okay everyone so i heard like no question from uh, any of the participants so like do you have any open questions sir uh, i think this is the first day for us that why okay. uh, we feel shy to speak yeah so the thing is like to learn something you must ask questions otherwise you won't be able to learn you know ask questions more and more questions can give you better learning experience so in e speaking uh, part uh, is uh, accent is very important 
sentence in speaking band if i want to score more than ascend british ascend or accent, american accent, ascend no the accent is not important at all Ex accent is not important uh, the thing is they need to understand what you are saying okay so the you, your voice needs to be clear so accent is not important no need to like copy others but they need to understand that what you are saying okay if you are mispronouncing it then that's a problem uh if i got uh onto got uh, onto uh, get a good score then i have to follow their uh native no 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 you don't really have to copy their native accent no absolutely not people getting higher score they don't have any native accent at all so like in my exam i got like 8.5 in speaking so that was not that difficult i was not native like at all so was like whatever you're saying is it clear do you have clear conception about the question have you answered all the question clearly explained everything and yes uh, there are some set criteria all your answers should be grammatically correct it should have uh, like good vocabulary that means lexical resource and the structure of your sentence it should have a wide variety of structure simple compound complex so you need to have reasoning you know so you need to just provide if, explanation if i am talking if i am talking and that time i uh, feel that uh, the structure is not good then can i repeat that sentence again yeah you can repeat the sentence you can repeat repeat the sentence okay you can repeat the sentence if you don't understand any question then you can ask questions as well okay sir but i think uh, sometime a uh, few people uh, may i ask a question yeah yeah of course uh um, the situation of speaking uh, is very stressful so how we can manage our stress and uh, the environment of this uh, uh, exam okay so most of the time examiner try to relax you before they start the exam okay so you should not be afraid uh, in most cases they try to be friendly and yes it is stressful and they ask you a lot of questions and you have to answer them one thing you have to remember that it's not uh, like a exam assessing your general knowledge you know it's not about general knowledge it's about uh, like language if you don't know answer you just say something okay i exactly don't know it but as far as i believe it could be something like this or that okay thank you yeah no i so you, you can provide suggestions like that so it's it's all about like how you think about it so you don't really have to be an expert like today it was all about hotel so you don't really have to be in hotel industry to answer all these questions you know? Yes okay Sir so his grammar is important for his speaking Yes grammar is important for all type of answers whether it is writing or speaking but it's not super important the thing is 
yes, you can make some mistake, but you should speak in a way so that another person can understand what exactly you're trying to say. The message needs to be clear. If the message is clear, it's all good. So during writing time, uh, if a mistakes uh, grammatically, uh, then my number is cut? Yes, it will reduce your score if you make grammar mistakes. It will reduce your score indeed. In speaking as well, if you make repeated grammar mistakes, but uh, getting uh, 6 to 6.5 band, you can make a lot of mistakes. Getting 7 band, it gets reduced. Getting like 7.5 band, it's like very less. Getting 8 band, it's like uh, getting very, very competent so and proficient. So you really have to have very good knowledge of grammar, like try to get everything correct almost. Uh, so you give a suggestion uh, how to increase our vocabulary level. Yeah, so to improve your vocabulary, what you can do, you know, so just go through the IELTS Cambridge books and you find new words and take note of new words. Okay. Yeah. And then write down what is the meaning of it and how to use it. So we can buy uh, the Cambridge book 1 to 15? Yeah, you can buy 1 to 15. You can go to any market or uh, you can download it from online. If you don't have it, uh, I can share the downloadable material. You can download it and then you can print it or you can yeah, sir, use it. Thank, I need thank I you. 15th, sir. 15th edition you have, sir? Yeah, I have downloaded the 15. So, yeah, maybe I have your most of your email address so i'll share you the link where you can download those okay. things so uh, in vocabulary sir i uh, i have uh, 4000 word then uh, yeah it, it, for vocabulary my suggestion is don't go for the random words you know if you go for the random words so the uh, if you just randomly memorize words what will happen you know so the thing will happen is like uh, you know the meaning of the word but you don't know the context what will happen uh, most of the time you won't be able to use it like you don't know in what situation in which situation you have to use this word it's better yeah. to use words that you know like in this sort of situation here you know the exact situation why you have to like use this and that sir what uh, step we should uh, have to follow to get a good brand score uh, could you just explain your question just i could not hear it properly okay i want to know what step we should must have to follow to get uh, to get a good band is to is called okay what are the steps you should like follow? must okay. have to follow sir must have to follow Must. we must have to follow or must okay. have to so uh, express them because this is an exam system and ielts uh, they don't give you exactly like strict rules and regulations so yes there are multiple ways so the more or less the thing that you have to do in IELTS they prefer to have wide range of vocabulary and good sentence structure so whether you are doing writing or uh, speaking you should have good vocab and good structure so to create a good sentence structure you should have Good knowledge of grammar as well so grammar is somewhat important here to create like sound sentences sir fluency in speaking is important to get a good score fluency in english fluency yeah fluency is somewhat important because if you are always hesitating and using a meaningless word like ah uh, um uh, always in every sentence, then that would be a problem. 
You might use sometimes, we all use that, but if you do it regularly on uh, repeatedly after one or two sentences, then it's, it's going to be a problem. Okay, thanks, sir. Okay, no worries. Okay, so I thank you everyone for participating in this class.